The Switch Lite is for everyone who found the original Switch too big. Really, that's it. By going with a smaller screen and fixed controllers, Nintendo will be lighter and more comfortable to hold, it can finally fit into your pocket, and at $200, it's $100 less than the... The Switch Lite is dubbed the Switch Lite, the cutest console we've ever seen. It's an adorable piece of hardware. The brighter colors, slimmer size, and lightweight make it almost seem like a Funko Pop version of the Switch. It's it, like it's a puppy begging to be pet. And once you hold it, it's hard to let go. It's clear that Nintendo wanted to make something that addressed the major downsides of the Switch, while that machine was revolutionary for being able to hop between home Kong and screen. Its Joy-Con controllers aren't securely attached since they also need to be easily removed. Or at least slapped controllers on a tablet. While the Switch Lite is more like a smartphone with controllers, ergonomically optimized for its smaller size. After playing a few rounds of Mario Kart, I noticed that the Switch Lite feels significantly sturdier than its bigger sibling. Those permanently attached controllers go a long way towards making the entire device feel solid. The original Switch. Nintendo was also able to make the Switch Lite smaller by using a 5.5 inch display instead of the big Switch's 6.2 inch screen. They're both 720 displays, but the smaller size technically makes the Switch Lite a bit sharper when it comes to pixel density. The screen itself looks just as bright as the original Switch, though it's still tough to see in direct sunlight, and its smaller size makes tiny text a pain. Zelda's item descriptions were already hard to read on the Switch, and you'll really have to squint to see them on the light. And then the Switch Lite controls similarly to the original. The two joysticks still feel fast and fluid, the four buttons in the face are still a bit too small and stiff, and the triggers up top are even more comfortable than before, since they're more ergonomic. The major difference is the directional pad, which is sure to delight fans of classic 2D games. It's smooth, accurate, and simply fun to use. While it's not as superb as the SNES controllers, which, which was honestly so bad I was forced to replace it with a third-party Joy-Con that had an actual deep to make the original Switch a do-it-all console. Its Joy-Cons were designed to be used as standalone controllers, the Switch Lite, and yes, the Switch Pro controller, proves it still knows how to make them. While adding a new user, I just had to sign into my Nintendo account and re-download my games. My cloud saves via Switch Online didn't come over automatically though, I had to manually download those in the settings. I suppose that makes sense since you don't want to have data for older games clogging up your precious consoles. The Switch Lite reliably uploaded my saves to the cloud, but when I tried to play those games on my original Switch, I got a warning about a conflict. I ended up having to manually download the Switch Lite file to keep playing. The Switch Lite is a secondary system, but there are some downsides to that. Mainly, you have to be connected to the internet to really play anything. To, I didn't notice any major performance differences with the Switch Lite. It has the same hardware as the revamped Switch, but I was surprised to find myself using it much differently. It was easier to pull out and play on a crowded subway. Its pound weight also makes it easier to carry around all day, compared to the 0.88 pound Switch. Those numbers might not seem that significant, but in your hand, it's instantly noticeable. I found myself grabbing the Switch Lite to play far more often throughout the day. So it didn't take me long to fill up the system's 32 gigabytes of memory. But once again, there's a micro SD card for additional storage. Given how 7.4 gigabytes, getting a micro SD card isn't optional. But at least they're getting cheaper these days. SanDisk's Switch branded 128 gigabyte card costs just $26. While playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, hopping around the Nintendo eShop and downloading games, the Switch Lite lasted 4 hours and 15 minutes. Similar gameplay sessions on the original Switch typically lasted me around 3.5 hours. Of course this isn't really a scientific comparison, but I definitely noticed that the battery life ticked down slower than usual. It's also worth noting that the power usage depends on the types of games you're playing. Nintendo claims the Switch Lite will last between 3-7 to seven hours, compared to estimates of 2.5-6 to six hours on the Switch. The newly refreshed version of the Switch, meanwhile, gets between 4.5 to 9 hours. You never plan to play on a TV, or if you're looking for something sturdier for younger players. But if you ever want to play games on the big screen, your only choice is to go with the larger revamped Switch. The options are even tougher for existing owners. You could snag a Switch Lite and use it as a secondary console and leave the original one permanently attached to your TV. Or you could just trade in your current console for the newer version with better battery life. And if you can hold out till next year, you might be able to snag the rumored premium Switch. I, at first, I thought the Switch Lite was similar to the 2DS, a stripped down, kid-friendly version of a more technically complex console. But that might be dismissive of what Nintendo has actually accomplished. The Switch Lite is refined and ergonomic in a way I'd never think of the 2DS. It might be missing key aspects of the Switch experience, but it's also the best way to play Switch games on the go. Stay tuned.